Welcome to Clark Stadium in Edmonton and ICU videos broadcast of game one of our Prairie Football Conference weekend doubleheader with the Calgary Colts taking on the Edmonton Wildcats. Good evening, football fans. I'm Kevin Donnan for ICU video, and we are very pleased to bring you broadcast coverage of the Colts and the Wildcats. Calgary comes into this game 0-4 on the 2018 campaign. It's been a very long season in Calgary already, but head coach Tim Kearse believes that 2019 begins tonight as we begin the second half of the 2018 season. Tim Kearse believes that 2019 is looking up and with the wealth of talent in the southern part of the province, these Colts won't be in the paddock for very long. As for the Wildcats, they're bound, going, looking to bounce back after last week's disappointing loss to Winnipeg here on home turf. The PFC are in fifth place and are looking to get back into the playoff hunt, but they have to win tonight, keep winning and get some help along the way. Head coach Darcy Park says, it's been a very competitive and good week of practice and they're ready for tonight. Three weeks ago, these teams met the Wildcats, destroyed the Colts 48 to nothing at McMahon in Calgary, but there's a lot of bad blood and it's a great rivalry between these two clubs. When they met in Calgary, these two teams met and combined for 50 penalties. It could be a wild and woolly one tonight. It's Saturday, it's Calgary versus Edmonton. It's a great rivalry. And with loving tribute to Ed Whalen, we could be in for a ring-a-ding-dong dandy tonight on the turf at Clark Stadium. Let's send things upstairs to Dave Rozak and Rob Herod with tonight's call. Gentlemen, it's gonna be a good one tonight. Lots of bad blood. You betcha, it, and, and it's a, it's amazing the similarity that these two teams are going through right now. One is one and three, one is zero, uh, zero and four. No, no doubt about that, Rob. But both teams have been through that youth thing, and right now it's Calgary's turn to go through it. Well, and the Cats were were in that exact same position exactly. in the last yeah. couple of years, and so they're trying to climb out, and they're a little bit on the upswing, so they've got to keep that going. And in talking with Darcy, he's going to have some of his young guys in there tonight to really push the veterans because they want to continue that. They don't want to slide back down to the bottom. Cal Calgary, I think they've got a long road ahead of them because they're they're struggling this year. But again, a lot of youth, and that's what you want to build on, and you got to start somewhere. The other similarity too about this game is that they take one game at a time because the the Cats aren't out of the playoffs completely, but they really have to have things go their way. Yeah, you know what? They've got to start with the win tonight, and that's and that's the reality for them. And they've got to improve, and they got to gain some momentum. I think if they can gain some momentum tonight, they'll have a little bit of confidence going into next week's game. And as, as Kevin mentioned, uh, Coach Tim Kiersey uh, coming in, parachuted in last year near the end of the season, uh, had a lot of uh, a lot of issues to deal with, but uh, he's he's managed to keep this team together, and that's the big thing going into the future. Yeah, it's a tough job for a head coach to keep them going. All right, I think we're getting ready for the kickoff here and it will be the Edmonton Wildcats kicking off to the Calgary Colts the uh, Wildcats in their retro blue and white uniforms which by the way I happen to love I think they look really really good down there uh, I agree with you they look really good and they, they match the snow around the side of the field and the all-white uniform of the Calgary Colts here's the kickoff it comes down to about the 10 yard line taken there by number 22 Jack Halverson out of Lethbridge Collegiate and he brings it up for a run back of close to 10 yards on the play and they'll move the ball and put it down at around the 26 yard line and from there the Calgary Colts will get things underway with Cole Bellway at quarterback and uh, Bellway uh, a former Calgary Dino. Yeah and it's going to be interesting to see what this offense does. They've obviously struggled this year to get points on the board and so again against a very tough Wildcat defense it's going to be interesting to see how they try to dissect the defense and gain some yards. All right, three receivers to this side of the field. There's the handoff up the middle, and it's taken there by number 25, David Bowers. They fumble the football, and uh, the Wildcats are signaling that they picked it up. They have. We'll wait for the final call from the officials. They say it's Wildcats football on the 30-yard line and right off the top. A bad break for the Colts, a good break for the Wildcats. Well, a tough lesson for a young quarterback and a young team trying to gain momentum in Calgary. And first play of the game, they turn the ball over. And again, credit goes to that defense. They're aggressive. They're getting hands on the ball, and the ball comes out. All right, Justin Swedish, the starting quarterback. You'll recall last week, Swedish 
uh, was taken out of the game with a, a knee injury, a sprained meniscus, I'm told, and his right knee is uh, heavily bandaged and braced. But he uh, he says he's ready. He's 100 percent and uh, figures he can still hang in there for the rest of this football game. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. There's the handoff. And again, this one will go straight up the middle, and it's taken there by number 29, Brayton Chilliback. Yeah, I see we also had a late flag on the play, so I'm guessing it's probably some aftermath after the play, so we'll see how that impacts the result of where this ball is going to be placed. And we have an injured uh, Wildcat down there. It looks to be... Number 56. 66, guys. 66 is. Uh, okay, we don't have a 66 <laughs> on our list. Well, guys, and Kevin down here at field level, I, and, you know, we had the turnover, but uh, you know, we all t we all took a walk around the field, and I mean, let's give credit where credit's due. City of Edmonton, did a, City of Edmonton did a magnificent job of clearing the snow. I can tell you, the turf is in wonderful condition for the first day of autumn. Um, you know, it, it, it's actually, there, there's no issues with the footing, not not like last week where we had the rain, but uh, it, it, it's basically the, the field is, is in fantastic shape, guys. So, the, so really the field conditions won't be a factor. It's just a little bit windy and cold, guys. 66 is Colton Lacoste, and he is seeing his first action of the season and his first play, and he is being looked after down there on the field. Uh, looks like it could be his right knee, so that's not a good way to start off your junior football career. <laughs> no, it isn't, and again, you know, you, you as a young player, you always want the opportunity, right? And you always want to get in the game. You want to have that opportunity to show the coaches that you can play at this level. And so again, getting injured on the first play, hopefully it's something that he can recover from shortly and he can get back in there later tonight. So Coach, Coach Darcy Park uh, getting back to Justin Swedish. Uh, I talked to him a couple of nights ago and uh, he was uh, he was pretty sure that uh, the, the, the young man can probably can complete this football game. But uh, watching him in, pr in practice, uh, he says he can't run all that well, but he can sure still pass the football. And, and really, he's got one of the better arms in the league. Well, he's a tough kid, and you know what? If, if you're, you're going to have to do a lot of work to keep him out, so I'm sure he wants to be there. He wants to compete. He wants to be there with his teammates, and so he's going to show us what he can do tonight on a little bit of a banged-up leg. Well, there you go. Colton Lacoste is uh, coming out under his own volition, so he is rim limping a little on his uh, left knee. So uh, hopefully he will be back in this football game. And it will be... First and five, 15 for the Wildcats. There's the handoff, the ball is fumbled and picked up at the 45 yard line and the Calgary Colts come right back with a break of their own. Recovered there by Zach Jantz coming up from his DB position to recover that football and bring it all the way up to about the 46 yard line. So could be one of those one of those football games. <laughs> well, well, let's hope it's not a sloppy game between two teams struggling to kind of get things going as organizations. And again, not a great way for the offense to start. You're right, they need to, they need to keep that momentum. They've just given it right back to Calgary. All right, a momentum buster, no question about that. And a momentum maker for the Calgary Colts. Back in the pocket, Bellway. Looks downfield, has a man open, overthrows him at about the 30-yard line intended down there for number 82, Brandon McIsaac out of the St. Francis Browns. Yeah, coming out of a great organization in St. Francis down in Calgary. They've, uh, you know, they've been a dominant high school team for many, many years. And so uh, he's experienced, he knows how to win. Now he's got to translate that to the junior level and see if he can get his offense going here. And I, I like what the offensive coordinator is doing. Let him, let him throw the ball downfield. Let him take shots downfield. Tell this defense, hey, we're not afraid to throw the ball downfield and challenge your secondary. Three receivers to the far side, straight back in the pocket, looking downfield once again. There's the pass. It is incomplete again. Overthrown, intended this time for Alex Groshak of the Calgary Cowboys uh, Midget uh, program. Speaking of, of great organizations, uh, news last night out of Cochrane. The Cochrane Cobras, who are a tier, two, a tier three team in high school football, won their 40th consecutive football game and that is an Alberta record. How's that? You know what, it's it's amazing what they're doing down there. I've had opportunities to actually interact with some of their coaches over the years at the provincial championships and at senior bowls and stuff like that. And you know what, they uh, they have a great program going and they've done a lot of good things. And you can see here, we have a big, big return. That is number eight for the Calgary, for the uh, Edmonton Wildcats, Jake Withrow 
And you can see right there why Jake Griffin is the leading punt returner in the Prairie Football Conference. You know, and that was a great job of fielding the punt in the air. It was dangerous, and he was on his horse the whole time to get to that, but that was what you want to do as a special team. And, and looking back to last week, the Cats couldn't get it together, and they struggled on special teams to kind of, and it was one of the areas they gave a big, big touchdown. And so it's great to see them bounce back with their own big play to really gain that momentum after a couple turnovers early. He got that on the run at about the 50 and brought it back 30 yards. There's the uh, pitch out on the right side, and again, taken by number 29 for the Wildcats, Braden Chilibeck, and uh, Chilibeck moves the ball ahead about nine yards or so, so it'll be second and one. Well, and a good job establishing the run early. You can see the little read option he had on that play. So he read the running back up the middle, and then it was a quick toss out to the edge, and you give him space. And you know what? The Calgary, uh, the Calgary Colts are going to need to do a better job of tackling. First contact probably came at about two, three yards into the run. Mm -hmm. He ended up getting nine, nine yards total, and so they're going to have to do a better job of tackling if they want to keep this offense at bay. Okay, Chilibeck is the single setback. Three receivers to this side. There again, the handoff this time to the left side to Chilibeck. Back and Chilibeck will crash over the uh, line of scrimmage for a gain of a couple yards on the play, and it will be enough for the first down. Yeah, he did a great job of finishing, stretching forward, making sure he got just far enough to get the first down. It wasn't by a lot, but it was a second effort. And when you talk to running backs about finishing runs, it's an important part of the offense that instead of getting tackled and getting pushed back or getting stood up you want to finish you want to be leaning forward and you want to really stretch to try to get the first down or the extra yard because the extra yard in the end can make the difference on so many so many plays and so many opportunities for an offense all right we might have uh, well they they're calling it a first down i think they were going to go out and measure it at first but then uh, the official ruled that uh, it was a first down and now he's talking to the coaching staff on the Wildcats sideline. Play set to get underway with 11.41 to go in the first quarter. No score between the Edmonton Wildcats and the Calgary Colts. This time a two-man setback. And out there is number 47, Zach Prankert. Here's the pass. It is into the end zone and just short of Withrow. He had to come back for it, but wasn't quick enough, and uh, the ball is dead, and it will be a second and 10 situation for the Wildcats with uh, Justin Swedish showing a good arm there, but just start coming up a little bit short. Yeah, kind of in between two receivers. Yeah. I would have been interesting to know the actual route combination because really they shouldn't be two guys that close. It kind of went a little far for one and a little short for the other. And so they're going to have to clean that up and make sure they can execute that route combination a little bit better than that to give Swedish a better uh, look at what he's throwing to. One receiver to the boundary side and going that way. The pass into the end zone picked off by the Calgary Colts. That's Sean Adams. He's up to the five, still going to the 10 and is finally tackled at about the 12 yard line. Great job of coverage on by Sean Adams. So we're always gonna ask these questions. Right knees sore, went to turn, had lots of time to throw the ball, but he didn't really get a lot on it. And that is bad ball placement by him. He's gotta get that up and over the top to give the receiver a chance to catch it. Unfortunately for him, the DB, great coverage, turned his head soon enough, made a great play on the ball. So Sweetie's is gonna have to do that. And I'm gonna be, it's gonna be curious to see pushing off that right leg. Is he gonna have the strength he needs to deliver the balls when he throws downfield? Ball is on the 13 yard line, first and 10 for the Colts. Third turnover of the game already. And there's a handoff and it goes nowhere. Great job of tackling along that uh, line coming up from his DB position was uh, Chopper Hippie. Well, once, once again, the DBs are getting their, sticking their noses in there. They love coming up. They love supporting the tackle. And, and you know what? When you have your free safety and you have your DBs coming up to do that, you know those DBs trust their teammates because you got to trust your other DBs that in man-to-man -man coverage, you're going to take care of your responsibility downfield. I don't know whether Nimi Idoki would uh, agree with you on that, but there's the pass. It is complete at the 25-yard line, taken by number 17, Dallas Burke. And uh, that is his 10th reception of the season. He's uh, got over 75 yards in, uh, in reception time so far this year. I talked to Nimi Odiki for the, uh, the defensive uh, back coach for the Wildcats uh, the other night, and uh, he was saying that uh, nah, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, we'll see how they do. And yeah, he doesn't like his DBs getting too involved in the, in the, in the tackling. Well, <laughs> it's, it's all a matter of, you know, that's for the Huskies, of course, but uh, it's all a matter of uh, what you want out of your players, I suppose. There's the well, handoff. Gain of about three yards. David Bowers out of Holy Trinity. I like how Calgary's mixing it up. They're not they're not worried about taking shots downfield. They've obviously completed some passes. They're mixing in the run, and I think that's going to be really important for those guys to uh, continue to keep the defense off balance. And again, now they got to show that they can be consistent, and they can got to convert on second and six here. Second and six. Ball on the 37-yard line. Three receivers to the far side. They go boundary side this time, and it is complete at the 45-yard line. Nice job by David Bowers once again. He being covered on the play by Ty Smith. Yeah, and I think it was a good route combination. Two guys down here running quick curl routes at just at the sticks, which is what you want to do. And that's a good that's good discipline by the by the young Calgary team to get the first down to run the route to the sticks. Tackle was there, but he still made the first down because he ran the route to the proper depth. All right, ball on the 45-yard line. First down for the Calgary Colts. Their first first down of the game. There's the pass wide open over on the 50 yard line and of course he goes to the ground and it will be ruled dead uh, reception by alex groshak well again great job by the receiver to come back to the ball not a well thrown ball uh, again coming up a little short if he gets a little bit more air and a little bit more strength into that he catches that standing up likely turns up field and could potentially get a first down but still not needless to say great effort by the receiver to actually make a catch even though it was a gain of a couple yards, mm -hmm. see where they spot yep. the ball, looks about two, three yards. No, they're, they're, they say it's right back to the original line of scrimmage. Now it looks like uh, he got three, two, yards. Two yards, again, three yards. Again, a lot of times you're gonna see receivers not make the effort to make that catch because it's only gonna be for two or three yards. But second and seven is a lot better than second and 10. A throwing down for the Colts. One, two, three, four receivers over on this side. Motion goes left. Straight back, and now being hurried and taken down for a loss is Cole Bellway. In on the tackle was uh, number 91, Dylan Lanigan, out of Emmy Lazert. Not a successful play for the offense, but Cole did a good job of tucking the ball away and not giving it back right, uh, right there. And so again, they're going to give their punt team an opportunity now. Punt team needs to do their job because last time they gave up a huge return. Great job to special teams on the Wildcats, but that cover team's gonna have to get downfield and as a team gonna have to corral the returner. Jake Withrow, ball is going to go straight to him. Good spiraling kick. He picks it up at about the 40 yard line, has some room along the sidelines and is run out of bounds at about the 50. So a run back of close to 10 yards and good field position for the Edmonton Wildcats. Yeah, their de defense again, although they gave up a little bit of ground uh, in the Calgary's end of the field, they did end up getting the stop and now they've got their offense in de decent position. Again, 11, uh, probably about 11, 12 yard return. Again, that makes a big difference. You're not quite so far in your end zone and it's a positive feeling for your offense to start in decent field position. First and 10, ball on the 50 yard line, Wildcats with 7.35 to go in the first quarter. No score. Taking on the Calgary Colts. Three receivers over here. There's the handoff and stopped at the line of scrimmage, but still going. And finally, back to the original line of scrimmage. A great job of ball carrying by Chilibeck. Well, a great, great effort not to take a loss on that. Interesting from an offensive standpoint, with knowing Swedish may not be as mobile, they're still running that read option. And again, for those football fans out there, the read option is basically he has the choice to leave it in the uh, stomach of the running back or pull it out and take it himself. We'll see how much he decides to pull it and run with it. Out of the shotgun, into the middle, a pass complete at the center field strike and taken down there by number 22, uh, Dustin Pollock. And again, one of the youngsters that he's brought into this, uh, into this game, uh, uh, Pollock out of Austin O'Brien. Yeah, and again, Darcy talked today down on the sidelines. You know, he's got a bigger roster tonight because it's a home game, and they've actually sat a couple veterans, letting the young guys mm -hmm. have an opportunity to show what they can do. And again, not only, not only are they trying to... Uh, not only trying to prove to coaches they can play for years to come, but they want to make that 40-man travel roster. Pollock, a second-year man. And it will be a third down. And we've got about five yards to go for the first down, so that will mean 
The Wildcats will be forced to kick this one away and back after a little bout with the flu last week uh, is Rosario Camarata. Camarata, one of those uh, soccer style kickers and punters. He gets a good spiraling kick, left hand, uh, left footed by the way. There it is taken down there at about the 25 yard line by Sean Vanderlis. And Vanderlis is run out of bounds after a run back of close to six. And the Calgary Colts will take over in their own zone. Yeah, and again, ball security is another issue. The ball came out, and uh, again, the Cats didn't quite, I think, get their hands on it before it went out of bounds, but the returner fall, f uh, f fumbled the ball out of bounds. Again, ball security. Their coach <laughs> is going to be on these guys about ball security. I know it's not maybe as wet as it was last week here, but again, the ground's cold. There's still moisture on it, and these brand-new footballs, when they use them for games, can be pretty slick sometimes. So again, a lot of balls hitting the ground right now, and the coaches aren't going to be happy about it on either, either side. Bellway still in at quarterback. Motion goes to the left, back in the pocket. Looks into the middle, fires, hit just as he was uh, got the ball away and intended there for number 82, Brandon McIsaac. Again, one of those St. Francis Browns uh, products and it goes just short of him, so it'll be second down. And yeah. guys, Kev, sorry to jump in here, guys, but uh, one thing I can tell you on the field is that the wind has picked up significantly and guys, I, I find like I do more weather reports from the sideline these days, but it has begun to snow. It's the first day of autumn, so it almost makes sense. But guys, it, the wind has picked up and it is starting to snow, so that could affect field conditions, guys. Straight out of the southeast, too. Thank you very much, Kevin. There's the pass. It is incomplete over on this side. And again, intended for Sean Van uh, to uh, Brad Hillier. But I'll tell you what, he was hit and hit hard. You know, when I, the DB read that right from the get-go, and you could see the quarterback didn't see the DB breaking on the receiver. Obviously, the receiver had to turn around, look back at the ball, but that's exactly what you expect out of your DBs. You see the guy go, react to it, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the ball is thrown there. He made an outstanding play. Good job of not getting there too early to take a penalty, but perfect timing, keep the ball out of his hands, and now force the punt team to be on the field. Evan Aldrich getting a good spiraling kick away down to about the 50-yard line, again taken by Withrow. Withrow dipsy doodles along the sidelines and has finally run out of bounds in Calgary territory at about, uh, well, we'll see where they mark it down, but I think it's about the 50-yard line, so it'll be good field position again for the Wildcats. Yeah, great starting position, but, you know, as we get through this first quarter, you know, there's only five minutes left in the first quarter, and I think the longer this game stays close, the more excitement you're going to hear from the Calgary sideline. You mean Good they point. want to keep in this game, and you know what? The Cats are coming in knowing they're probably favored to win this by a fair bit. They need to get some points on the board here and not give Calgary any hope that they're going to make a chance Pass. to keep this game close. Incomplete on the far side and intended down there for mm -hmm. Carter Lawson and uh, Lawson out of Wainwright. We'll just check that number for you. I believe it was number 83. Nope, number 80, Brandon Rebnord. And again, I do like the fact that they are taking shots downfield, but the shots downfield, one, two of them fell short, and that one just wasn't on target. Again, back in the pocket. Again, looking into the middle and incomplete. Again, one of those passes that was too long for one and too short for the other. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that, you know, you may be right that Justin just isn't able to, to plant that back foot and, uh, and let her go. Well, if, if you're not pushing off that back foot, that's where you generate your power from and you get all the torque in your body as a quarterback from that back leg. And if he's not really able to push off or that's tight because of the wrapping on there, He's just not delivering the ball like we know he can. He is, guys, it, it's it, it's a late, you know, he's laboring on that right knee. And he is, I, I would not be surprised. I know we talked about uh, Darcy Park pulling, you know, pulling, he'll, he'll, he's going to pull the switch, you know, if he needs to. Because right now, Justin is having a hard time, uh, very gingerly on that right knee. So I think, guys, don't be surprised if you see Cody Olsen very soon. Yeah, and on that return, another fumble by the Calgary Colts. Again, they let it bounce on the ground. They let the ball hit the ground. It came right off his shoulder pad. Another opportunity for the Cats. They were just a little bit behind and couldn't quite get onto the loose ball. But Calgary has definitely got to take care of that. You know, if you, if you ever want to get on that upswing, turnovers is something that you don't need to have skilled players to avoid turnovers. You just need to hold on to the ball and teach that to your players. Colts deep in their own zone. There's the handoff this side. 
Again, it was David Bowers, and uh, he has stopped after a short game. One thing we should mention, and, uh, and uh, Kevin mentioned that uh, you know Cody Olson is set to go. He is indeed set to go. They have been running a series of plays designed for his athleticism and uh, during practice this week. So he's not going to come in cold like he did last week. He's, he's prepared this week. Yeah, and I had a chance again talking to Darcy about exactly that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we see their offense. Back in the pocket, Bellway has a man open, incomplete, just out of the uh, reach of the intended receiver, Dallas Burke. And I'll tell you what, he picks up that one and he could be gone. Yeah, he is going to be gone. And again, they're getting in behind coverage. And we talked earlier about the support of the run that the secondary gives. And again, when you are going play action, when you fake the run, you draw some of those guys in, it gives you a chance to get over the top. And really in that play, the free safety was nowhere to be found. And we've talked about in that past week, the free safety creeps up, creeps up. You get posts coming in from behind and there's an opportunity they just missed on that one. So a two and out for the uh, Colts, and they will be kicking this one away. And the Colts are missing a player. They've only got four men on the line of scrimmage right now, and it looks like they're going to have to either take a penalty or someone's going to have to get out there in a hurry. All right, the play clock is counting down, and that is going to be it. They will take a penalty, and that will move the ball back and give the Wildcats even better field position. So they're going back five and now the coach has to make the decision. Do you punt it away or do you give up two? And to be honest with you, with the game going the way it is, I think I would actually give up two because right now the offense of the Wildcats not really moving the ball as well as they probably should. And uh, gaining the field position may give their offense just enough space, but it looks like he's ready to punt this one away. The punt returners are standing at about the 42 yard line and he will take a knee and give up the two points. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Where you go, coach? <laughs> he must be thinking the same thing I am. I mean, you know what, in a game like this, let's get out of our own end. Let's try to switch the field position. Now the job turns to the other parts of their team and making sure they don't give up big plays. See if they can win that field position battle because Calgary has shown glimpses of their offense moving the ball. And so if they can get a decent field position, which they really haven't had all game, um, they're gonna have an opportunity here to maybe get some points. But uh, first the Cats gonna get their shot. That's right, 3.26 to go in the first quarter. And we have some action on the scoreboard. It's two nothing in favor of uh, the Wildcats. You know, uh, uh, when you look at the total offense for this season for these two teams, uh, really there isn't a whole heck of a lot of difference uh, uh, the uh, Wildcats have allowed 516 yards through the air and three touchdowns and 416 yards on the ground and four TDs. So that's, uh, th you know, it, it's pretty even up as far as uh, the, uh, the defense is concerned for this, uh, for this Wildcats team. Uh, the offense for the Calgary Colts uh, has not been all that uh, productive either on the ground. I think they've rushed for something like 400 yards and five TDs. Yeah, and again, no, no, no TDs. I mean, right, right now you can say, yeah, it's been a sloppy. We've seen the ball hit the turf too many times today, so both teams need to shore that up. And the team to do it first may have the opportunity to take a little bit more of a lead in this one. There's the kickoff. It is fumbled at the 35-yard line and then picked up and taken forward for a run back of close to uh, 12 yards on the play. And in there with the football was uh, number 25, Ramon English. Yes. And I expect we'll probably see Ramon English uh, coming into this into this game at uh, at the setback position. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the wind plays into it. We don't see a whole lot of action on the flags, but when we were down on the field before the game, you could feel the breeze coming through. And if you look up at Commonwealth Stadium, the Eskimo flags are are stiff and straight out to the side, so there is wind out there. There's the fake, and the pitch out goes to David Adebayo, and Adebayo crashes his way up over the. Center field stripe for a gain of about 11 yards. So already now they're, they're starting to mix up the plays a little bit and a little misdirection and uh, Adebayo takes off for a good game. Yeah, game. and that's the second time we've seen that exact play and both times it's resulted in 9, 10, 11 yard run. So that's, uh, it's obviously a play that's working for them and they see how they can uh, expose the Calgary defense and attack it. All right, Adebayo now is the single setback. Motion goes to the right, there's the uh, fake and taken off is Justin Swedish. And I guess that answers the question, doesn't it? <laughs> well, he's willing to pull the ball. And again, when you run that read option enough times and you give it, you're going to open it up. And I think great decision by Justin Swedish to take a little hook slide, not take a shot. Because yeah. again, 
He doesn't want to take that first shot of the game. It's hard. Sometimes it's good for a quarterback to take that, to believe in your leg. But right now, he knows it's sore. He's got to protect that. Good job of making the read and taking the hook slide so he doesn't yeah. take a shot. He was running a little gingerly, I thought. He did look. He definitely didn't look like his usual self. That's right. So a gain of eight. It'll be second and two. Ball on the 48-yard, 47-yard line. This time they go with uh, twin setbacks and. First man through is Adebayo, and Adebayo is, oh, make that, I'm sorry, number 47 uh, is uh, Zach Prankard, the big guy out there. They've got two big guys uh, playing at setback, and uh, that's, that's, that's it's a almost big like a fullback uh, thing. Well, that's like going. a tight, that's like a, a tackle <laughs> playing fullback. That's a big dude out there, and he, he was just rumbling forward, and, you know, that's what you want to do, but he came up short, and he's got another six inches to go, so we'll see if Swedish takes this himself and just plunges forward to get the first down. He's under center and uh, finds a hole and actually picks up about two yards on the play. And it'll be a first down at the Wildcats offense on the move with a minute and a half to go in this first quarter. And that's good. Gives Swedish a chance to take a kind of low risk run where he's going to take a shot and just to, again, build that confidence in his knee because the psychological part of the game, especially at the quarterback position, is so important. And you want to get him into the game. You want to see if he's ready to take shots. Otherwise, you may have to make a change. All right, uh, there's all kinds of movement along the offensive line, and uh, I think moving first uh, was uh, one of the uh, big tackles on this side, number 55 for the Wildcats, and that is uh, Richard McGuire out of Ross Shep. So it'll be illegal procedure. Guys, Kevin, from the sideline, I've got an update from the out-of-town scoreboard with just with time time just ticking away in the first quarter the saskatoon hilltops lead the regina thunder seven to three in regina so everything going according to form uh, for the league leading hilltops guys and there's a big one coming up next week with the huskies and hilltops as well thanks very much kevin here's the handoff again right up the middle still going with it is david adebayo <laughs> He finally is taken down, but not before he picks up another eight or nine yards on the play. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know what, that's a lot of confidence in your backs and your O-line when you on first and 15 decide to hand off on an inside run. And uh, you know, and that's exactly why he has the confidence in his run game right now and the offensive line. The offensive line are getting bodies on bodies. They're moving the guys backwards, giving the running back opportunities to make plays. And again, poor tackling by the Calgary defense allowed him to get Almost all 15 back. Adebayo is the lone setback. Handoff, fake, and pass complete to, again, that's the big guy, number 47, Platnard. And he is seeing a lot of action out there. Well, I mean, he is excited. You could just tell coming out of the backfield how excited he was. He's like, this is my play. And then again, he's coming down on a smaller DB, and the DB is going really low. And he came down, and he dropped the boom on him. And so great way to finish the run, but good hands for a big man. And he is a first-year man, he, and six foot and about 220 pounds. Here it is once again, the handoff to Adebayo, and he is stopped at about the 16-yard uh, line. There is a flag on the play. It came out of the backfield, and it will be, it looks like a holding call against uh, Yeah, that's usually the where the play, that's usually on a run play where that's going to be, and so we'll see what the refs have to stay here. Looks like they're talking to Calgary, so I'm guessing it's going against the Wildcats. Again, penalties, not something coaches want to see, and so they're going to move them back. It's probably going back 10 by the looks of it, and... Uh, yeah, it is indeed. Going back 10, holding it, it's going to be first down and 20. And again, if you know you can run the ball and get 14, 15 yards on a, on a run play, that's uh, you're in a good position as an offense. Just getting back to Zach Prankard, uh, he's out of Centennial High School. What I really want to know is what position did he play at a Centennial High School? Because I'm guessing... It ain't going to be running back. I don't know <laughs> if it would have been running back. He may have been a guard. He could have been a tight end. Yeah. But he's getting his touches tonight. And uh, his brother, Tim... Uh, happens to be uh, number 35 out there. He is, uh, he is actually a running back. Oh, a so the, it's a running back family, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got him in there, and you can see on that last play, he's kind of an offset back. He's about a yard, a yard behind the tackle, a little bit maybe on his outside shoulder. And again, he's really in there to do a lot of blocking, but they obviously use him as a blocker, and he really did a good job sealing the end on that last play. Unfortunately, the running back came on the inside into the group. 
So that is the end of the first quarter of play. Two nothing in favor of the Wildcats. Let's go downstairs. Here's Tim. I can't, Kevin. <laughs> you can almost call me anything, Dave, these days. Well, you know what, guys? Uh, ICU video and our broadcast coverage of Prairie uh, Football Conference action. We want to congratulate the Edmonton Wildcats on their 70th anniversary season and head coach Darcy Park on his 20th anniversary in, and his association with the Wildcats. Of course, it's a very special season with the new uniforms. There's a lot of fundraising and I've got a great guest coming up at halftime. Brad Quartel, the vice president of the Wildcats, will be joining me on the ICU video broadcast halftime and we're going to be talking about a lot of exciting programs and a lot of initiatives coming up for the Wildcats. So stay with us here on the ICU video broadcast halftime report coming up in another quarter's time here and uh, as, as we can say it's a little bit of a chilly night tonight but it's a great night for football at, at Clark Stadium and, and uh, later on tonight we'll be talking about the Dalkey Mobile. So stay tuned, guys. Lots to talk about. Oh, I can hardly wait for that, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> They're set up, I'll tell you, Dave. It is the it's the best motorhome in the PFC. And you've been inside? I have not. I, I was not into the compound, but I'll tell you, <laughs> uh, there's only a select few who can get in there. But uh, it's uh, it's just a fantastic way to build the culture for the Wildcats, and, it, and it's a lot of fun. I got the password for you. Oh, well, I'm, then you know what? Joe you and me. I, you and I right at the end. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Do, do they still have that barbecue going at halftime? Yeah, I'll tell you, man. Someone down. The, get... that, there was a party going on. It was a real tailgate party. And, and you know what? Uh, Jaden Dalkey, who is, of, of course, one of the best players in the entire nation, uh, has got a little bit of an entourage following him around. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's part of Darcy Park's quest to build culture and get things going. And, and his team captain is uh, has done a remarkable job. So, you know, the Wildcats are still trying to, you know, claw their way back to the top. But uh, they're definitely building a great culture, guys. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's Justin Swedish in the pocket, looking into the end zone, has the man open. What a catch on the two-yard line by number 81, Lucas Howe. Out of Archbishop O'Leary, he had to go up and back for that one. He did, he had to, he had to maintain his focus throughout, because again, landing flat on your back after a catch, it's work to hold on to that ball, but what a great dart thrown, and we talked about it earlier on that go route on the outside guy, he's gotta get the ball to the outside, Perfect ball placement and a great catch by the receiver to get him right within striking distance in the shadows of the goal line. And we see another one of the uh, newcomers to this Wildcats team coming out onto the field. And uh, that is number five, Leighton Beresenkov out of uh, Hunting Hills High School down in Red Deer. 5'9", uh, 160, he's a receiver. And uh, so, I, as you were saying, and you, when we talked to uh, Darcy before the game, he's gonna get as many youngsters as he can into this game. Yeah, and he's not afraid to do that. And yeah. again, mm -hmm. I mean, I think he, I think he'd want some more points on the board at this point in time of the game because if you if you would have told both these coaches at the end of the first quarter it's going to be two nothing for the Wildcats, I think you'd have Darcy who's really really upset, and you'd have Tim on Calgary who would be not so. He'd actually be fairly happy because he's like, hey, we got to keep this close. Now it's all about making plays, mm -hmm. right? If Calgary makes a, whoever makes the next couple of big plays is going to take advantage. And again, right there we saw one made by the Wildcats. Great throw, great catch. Now they're close to the goal line. They'll mark it at about the four, and it'll be first and ten, first and goal for the uh, Wildcats. Second quarter just underway. Justin Swedish at quarterback. David Adebayo is the lone setback. Three receivers to the far side. There's the handoff left side to Adebayo, and he just powers his way through a couple of tacklers for the touchdown. And you could see there the first contact was made at about three yards, but a mistake the defense alignment and linebackers made is they're trying to tackle him up high. Oh, yeah. And when you tackle a big running back like that up high, you are not going to get him down. And they didn't get him down, even though there was three or four guys. He got all the way to the end zone and was still standing at the end. Well, you saw him coming off the field. Uh, cameraman Dave Foley got a great shot of him. You can see the, the strength in his upper body. I mean, he's huge up there. He is, he is a solid back and you cannot afford to let a big back like that run, get steam and he had the steam, he had the speed going in the end zone and tackling up high is never gonna get it done. Camerata puts it through the uh, post, through the, uh, the goal post and his uh, left footed kick will give the uh, Wildcats a nine nothing lead with 14.22 to go in the first half. Good, uh, good start to this quarter for the Wildcats. 
and all because of that one great pass to Lucas Howe. Yeah, and again, second and long. I think it was second and 18 at that point. Again, great pass <laughs> thrown, and that's what you want. You want to be able to stretch the field. And they, over the last few weeks, we haven't seen the Wildcats complete a lot of deep plays, and that's mm -hmm. a great way to do it. And again, you're going to start to see the secondary in the Calgary, uh, Calgary Colts team, they're going to start to soften a little bit. They want to want to get guys in behind them. So as they soften, you can mix it up and go middle or short and intermediate routes as well. All right, Camerata to kick off. Gets a good end over end kick. It'll come down to about the 20 yard line. And it is taken there by Brad Hillier and the uh, Bow Valley Bobcats uh, running back. Brings it all the way back up to about the 30 yard line. So a gain of uh, five on the run back. And it'll be first down for the Calgary Colts. Yeah, good little run back. Good job of catching the ball in the air. Again, great job by the cover team. Although he caught it in the air, he didn't really get a lot after he caught it. So again, hats off to the cover team doing their job, keeping Calgary inside their own end. First down for Calgary. Four receivers to the far side. There's the pitch out by to Hillier. Hillier gets it around the outside and is stopped after a gain of a couple yards on the play and some extracurricular activity going on. Nice tackle by uh, Noah Perkins out of uh, Bev Facey, another first year guy. Yeah, and once again, great linebacker move, good speed, because again, you could see Calgary on that play there trying to get to the edge with their speed. They didn't, we've got a penalty here. and We're gonna watch the ref to see what the calls. It looks like it's going against the Wildcats. Jaden Dalkey coming uh, off the field. Looks to be okay for a bit of a rest and it will go against the Wildcats that will move the football up to about the 47 yard line and a first down this time they send three receivers four receivers to this side of the field back in the pocket looking into the middle he has a man open complete at the 30 yard line a great catch by number 82, Brandon McIsaac. So right after the penalty by the Wildcats, an undisciplined play, they go right to the middle of the field. And interesting enough, Jaden Dalkey, again, we talked about his, his level of play. He's playing at such a high level right now. He is not on the field for the defense. So interesting, not sure why, but maybe uh, we can get some insight into that as to why he's not on the field. And again, Calgary goes right after the middle of the field and completes a big pass. Gain of about 34 yards on the play. It'll be first down for the Colts. There's the handoff and uh, reversing his field and going up the right side was Brad Hillier. And the second year running back will make a gain of close to 10 yards on the play. We'll see where they mark it down. Actually about eight. So good to see Calgary's offense again, mixing it up again. They, we've seen them throw deep. Finally, they complete a deep pass. Now they go back to the run. They get a great production on first down to make it second in a yard and a half. A good opportunity to get a new set of downs here. See if they can get the ball in the end zone and keep pace with the offense of the Wildcats. Cole Bellway still at quarterback. Again, a handoff to Hillier. He tries to get to the outside, does, and is hauled down, but not before he picks up the first down. Well, again, a great job getting to the edge. Good patience by the running back, and we've got someone down. Can't quite see the number from here. Oh, there we go, number 19. Thanks, <laughs> thanks to our zooming camera. There we go. <laughs> and guys, Jaden Dalkey, there was nothing wrong. It was, it was. Uh, let's come over to the sideline for a bit of a breather after that UR penalty. So, uh, as Rob pointed out, Dalkey comes off the comes off the field, and and instantly the Colts attack right down the middle where Dalkey would be. So I think it was more of a, uh, a, a just a bit of a reminder for Jaden about a couple of things ab about the UR. So uh, that so Jaden is is perfectly healthy. But uh, just needed a little, um, a, a play or two to focus, I think. Sam Jones is the injured uh, Wildcat down there, Kevin. And uh, he's going to get up under his own steam and looks like he'll be okay. 
Well, I could, I could get a sense from Coach Darcy Park at the beginning of the game when he talked about how he had some young guys doing some dressing, uh, dressing for the game, young guys getting some more playing time to push the veterans. You're going to lean on those veterans often throughout the season to set the example. And again, you, ma you made mention of the UR taken earlier. You don't want your veterans doing that. You know, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to eliminate that totally uh, out of the game. But again, you want your veterans to set the lead. You want to set the tone uh, for how you're going to play football when the whistles are, when, when you're in between the whistles. Bellway at quarterback. The setback is David Bowers. They hand it off to Bowers, and Bowers tries the right side of that uh, Wildcat the line and is stopped after a gain of a couple yards on the play. Yeah, it looks like he got three or four on the play again, mixing it up, run pass, which I think is good. And again, they're not out of this game. They've kept it close, and I think that's a good thing. You know what? They feel like they're in this game still, and that's an important thing for your players to learn. Like, hey, we're in this game. Let's go and let's go get. Let's go sit at seven. Let's not settle for a field goal here. And the longer they keep it close, the more confidence they will get. There's a fumble in the backfield, and Bellway is able to pick it up, but he's going to be taken down for a loss. He may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage, but again, that's one of those things that uh, uh, plague a young a young team like the Calgary Colts. Yeah, and we've seen throughout the course of the first and now into the second quarter, they put the ball on the ground a few times. And again, another little mistake that again, opportunity is there. They've got to learn to take advantage of those opportunities. And again, as a young team, you've got to, <laughs> the players have to live through some of that. Oh, it's yeah. not like you just can't tell them, okay, we've got to learn, you know, they all know, they've all heard it in high school, they've all heard it in minor football wherever they were growing up they've got to go out and they've got to experience that and that that right there is a, is a lesson and it's a tough lesson because again they're really in a position to get seven points um, but they've got to learn that lesson if they want to get better all right here's the field goal attempt from the 25 yard line Halverson with the attempt and it is good and the Calgary Colts are on the scoreboard it is now a 9-3 football game with 11-0-1 to go in the first half and uh, that's only the 11th point of the season for the Calgary Colts yeah and you know what again it's 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 about just moving slowly moving forward steps forward again you're going to talk about not making mistakes not fumbling the ball and again the coach is going to be on the sideline hey we can't make those mistakes at that time second and seven we're, we're close to a touchdown we've got to be able to execute and those are the little things that but any, any player playing football at this level, you want to kind of climb your way out of the basement, mm -hmm. those are the things you got to take care of. And again, if you look at the through the course of this game, Calgary's turned the ball over, they've put the ball on the ground.